So as we're working here today, um, we're going to be doing this practice final. And as we're working on this practice final, we're allowed to have uh, one sheet uh, written out. So we're allowed to have one sheet that we write out. We can have an equation sheet or something. We're going to have one sheet of, uh, you can do front and back on it and stuff that you can write out. Uh, but uh, no notebooks for the final. Like they're all closed, all closed up. So like that's not going to be happening here. So uh, as we're going through this practice final, um, I want us to be aware of that. Now, we will be getting an equation sheet. As we get an equation sheet on the day of the final and probably even tomorrow, I'm going to show us uh, how, do you, how we can use that equation sheet. Ideally, I would have it here for us today, but um, c'est la vie, huh? So I want to try to work through some of these. And, and I want to try to work through some of these and uh, so that way we can uh, have some stuff. So uh, there's going to be no phones on the final as well. I know when I'm going to be doing stuff today, I'm going to be doing stuff with my calculations. On, I'm going to be using my phone calculator. I have calculators at the school. So on the day of the final, you're going to have to use a calculator from the school or like a calculator, calculator, not a phone. So, um, so when we're looking at some questions here, uh, I'm going to try to have it to where I can start building up my one sheet. So that way I can have some equations and maybe I can have, so I have some stuff written out. So here, as I look at this number one, we're talking about how far a car uh, can go. So when I'm getting my one sheet for physics. Uh, I'm just using a sheet out of my notebook. That's where I'm getting something from. Uh, I'm gonna be starting to build up an equation sheet or building up some stuff as I'm working through here. But I'm asking this question here, how far does a car go if it has an average speed of 80 kilometers per hour for 30 minutes? So really this question is using this relationship, this X equal to V times T, plus that initial position. So you remember using this. Um, this is when we had a constant acceleration. We also had this one half a t squared plus that v naught times t plus that x sub zero. So we also use this equation here where it's the same thing, but here this was this accelerated term. So in this part, we have a car going with an average speed. So there's no acceleration acting on this. So as I look, with no acceleration, we're going 80 kilometers per hour. So at 80 kilometers per hour, I'm going to do this for 30 minutes. Well, that's going to be for half hour, 0 0.5 hours. So I know 30 minutes is half an hour. So it's 0 0.5 hours. So 80 kilometer x equals a v times t. That's what I'm getting at. That's that v. That's the t. I could put this into meters per second, but I'm just getting 80 times that 0.5. That's how I'm going to get to this c right here for the 40 kilometers. But really what I wanted us to see was this equation here. So as I'm building this up, now I'm having something to where this, I can have my X uh, be my displacement. And my V be my velocity. And so I, maybe I can also put uh, units for my displacement. Uh, it has units of meters, sometimes kilometers, um, for my displacement, my velocity is going to have meters per second or kilometers per hour. Um, so that way, uh, now as I'm building up my one sheet, I have something here to where I know what this X is. I know what this V is. I haven't talked yet about what this A is, but we kind of know what that is. So I'm even going to write that out that this A is that acceleration. In terms of meters per second squared. You can also do kilometers per hour squared. It's a time per unit or a meter, or a distance per unit time squared. So 
So now, as I look to number two, it's really just asking for a modified uh, expression because now we have a velocity and we have the displacement, but now we're asking for this, this time right here. So this how long, uh, this is asking for time. So in this how long for T, that's the time in terms of seconds. And I'm even gonna put like in underneath here, how long? And I'm gonna quote around that because like sometimes if you just know what the question's asking for, and when you're saying how long, it's talking about the time here. So as I look at this number two, it's asking for the time aspect. So we're trying to see how long does it take for this jogger? So the time. So if I know this x equal to v times t, well, the t is going to equal to that x on v. So I know my x, my displacement is that 400. My v is the 8. So that's where we're going to get that 400 divided by the 8. And that's, you know, calculator if you need to. So we get that 50 there. And so we got to make sure that we're also dealing with the correct units because this is meters per second divided by, or meters divided by meters per second. So it should be 50 seconds. Sorry, and there's no other units. So it would just be this 50 seconds. So as I'm working through this here, really my main focus is trying to build up this one sheet. And further, I'm trying to figure out as I'm working on this practice final, uh, what I know. versus what I don't know. Like these first two problems, some of you guys might've been able to do it real easily, like real fast. Um, so like that, that could have been done. Some of us might've looked at this and have no idea what to do. Well, this is where I want you asking yourself, what do you know versus what do you don't know? So I even gave us more problems here, more problems as I look through. Um, well, where I wanna take us now is, uh, I actually want to, I want to kind of skip down. I want you guys to be able to do this graphical analysis right here. So these number three and four, that's using this graph over here. I want you guys to try to try to look at that. But as we try to look at it, I'm going to try to just analyze the graph. I'm not necessarily even going to tackle the problem. As I look at this graph, I'm looking at a distance versus time graph. And so I know with my distance versus time graphs, my x versus t, if I had this, then I have a velocity versus time that would be a constant positive. If I have that, then my acceleration versus time is a constant zero. These are just the graphs. Now I'm, I'm going to come down here. If I make another x versus t and a velocity versus t and then an acceleration versus t graph. Now I, I had a straight looking one and now I'm going to get a curvy looking one. With a curvy looking one, now this velocity is changing. So when it was straight, we had a constant velocity. With a curving, we have a changing velocity. So this change velocity here, we see it starts off zero going to positive. So my velocity is going to be zero going up to a positive. And if my velocity constantly positive increase, I'm going to have an acceleration here that's going to be a constant positive. And there's more graphs to this. Mostly I just wanted us to start thinking back to where we had these graphs, where the slope of our position versus time was the velocity versus time. So that's why we have a positive slope. We have a positive velocity. Here we have a changing slope. So we have a changing velocity. And the slope of the velocity was that acceleration. So looking at this, we can calculate the average speed by getting the slope of this line. So looking between zero and four seconds, you're going to get the slope going between zero and four. You want to get that slope, just this, this region in here. So you want to get the slope of that right there for this one. And then for the between four and 10 seconds, 
and you're going to get that slope. So uh, the slope of your displacement first time is that velocity or the average speed here. So uh, we will come back to those. I'll try to get, uh, I will show you where I'm gonna post up the answers for this. I have an answer document. Um, I even show us what it looks like. So we see it, not that one, is this it? Yeah, look at all this. I got all the answers all already buggled in. So you can see number three is a D, number four is an A. And um, I want you guys to try to see this stuff. Um, now, as I take us down to like looking at some forces stuff, now, now I'm going to start writing on my sheet something about forces. Uh, so, but before I, I, I don't know, do anything, like how are we doing? How are we doing out there? Does anyone have any questions? Does anyone want to say any words? <laughs> No words? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is exactly like 2020. All right. So um, I'm building up an equation sheet. I want you guys trying to do the same uh, as we're working through this. So now as I come down to this number five, we're talking about forces. So as I come back to my equation sheet, I'm going to now get to something where I can delineate, talk about forces. We dealt with a lot on forces. Now, as I, as I begin, uh, I wanna start with this Newton's second law, the sum of the forces is equal to MA. That's this Newton's second law. So we know Newton's second law. We also know force of an action is going to equal to the force of a reaction. There's Newton's third law. So this is like when we talked about this Newton's third law, uh, it's been like where I said, if I hit a kid with 100 Newtons, then my hand hurts because I, I, I hit him with 100 Newtons and now my hand got hit by that kid with 100 Newtons. And so if I slap a kid with, uh, with the back of my hand, uh, I'm going to write him a referral for hitting me. And that's the reaction, action, reaction. Be for every force, there's an equal and opposite force. So just like if you guys like, uh, I don't know, slap. If you guys slap all the slap the table, your hand is gonna hurt because the table slapped you back equally. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. And so um, when we get to this Newton's second law, I'm gonna come back. I know I'm jumbled this up a little bit, but this F equal to MA, if it equals to zero Newtons, if the sum of the force is equal to zero Newtons, then we have balance in the forces. These are balanced forces. So when there's balanced forces, we have constant velocity. With constant velocity, we also have no acceleration. With balanced forces, it can move just not speed up. So something can be moving, it's just not speeding up, slowing down, changing direction. There's no acceleration on that. Now when there is the sum of the forces, which is MA, and that's where we add up all those forces. If this does not equal to zero. So if it's a value of something greater than one or less, like greater than zero or less than zero, if it's positive, negative, this is unbalanced, like my mental state. Unbalanced.
It's unbalanced. So when it's unbalanced, we're going to have a change. So with unbalanced forces, we're going to lead to a change. We're going to lead to a change in the velocity. This is speeding up, slowing down. Or change direction. I'm going to make a free body diagram as well, a force diagram. So in these force diagrams, recall mg, that's that force of gravity. We can have something like the normal force. This is the normal, which is from the floor or a surface. This is the weight. from gravity. And this would be for just an ob object. If I had a, t a surface, an object, an object just sitting there, it feels this gravitational force down and that normal force up. And so we're gonna get to this, in this case here, the normal force up equals this, the weight down and so in this right here, I have an object just sitting there with a constant velocity. So my normal force equals the weight, giving me a balanced force with constant velocity, no acceleration. Um, this could move, but it's this, my object here is not moving. It's just staying still. So here's just some, uh, a basic reminder on our forces, a basic uh, uh, re recollection here, where when I get to the sum of these forces here, my sum of the forces, this is where I get my normal force up minus that mg down, and I set that equal to ma. In this case, the normal force equals the gravitational force. That's what I've indicated here with my lines of congruency, that if this was a value of six, that this would also be a value of six. So six minus six equals zero. That's why I have zero acceleration, not zero mass, but zero acceleration. And so this is how we're going to get to these sum of the forces. But I do want to take us back over here and I want to try to talk to us a little bit as I look to this number five about this car driving on a highway and it's experiencing balanced forces. Now recall balanced forces, this means uh, the sum of the forces uh, equal to zero. So the resulting motion is not uh, coming to a stop because that's a changing velocity. Speeding up, that's a changing velocity. Uh, slowing down, once again, changing velocity, a constant velocity. So this right here, is going to be our selection for this. The car is going to maintain a constant velocity, constant velocity with these balanced forces. And as we continue, now a ball is dropped from a tall building. As the ball falls, the upward force of air resistance becomes equal to the downward pull of gravity. When these two forces become equal in magnitude, the ball will. So in other words, what we're saying here is we're getting for our free body diagram, we're having the gravitational force. That's the mg. And we're saying now there's this air resistance, this force of an air resistance. We're saying that they're equal to one another. So with this, we're seeing that once again, we're getting balanced forces. So it's not that it's going to stop falling. It's can, it can move. It's just going to fall with a constant speed, not faster and faster, because that's accelerating slow down. No, that's a change in motion. This is still falling, it's just going to have a constant velocity because there's balanced forces. The sum of the forces equals to zero. If we have a bus driving down the street, passing by a, a, a parked car, uh, this is where we're gonna get to inertia, inertia. So let's get back to our, 
equation sheet here. And I want to write in something about inertia. Because I know that's a word that we've said, but only like a couple times. Really, inertia is congruent with mass. Inertia is the resistance to a change in motion. In other words, it's really hard to push someone who's really big. Like if you were to uh, push, like if you had to push someone around, you'd want to push a little kid, a little freshman uh, over the big uh, football player um, because it's easier. They have less mass, less inertia. So uh, I'm not suggesting to push a freshman. I'm just saying um, it would be harder. Uh, so as I bring this down here, now we're having a bus, a bus, a bus pass, take two, a bus driving down the street, passing a parked car. We're looking for the greater inertia. So we're not talking, we don't necessarily care if it's moving, if it's moving. Um, we're just talking about mass. So not moving car or the bus. I see something here, more mass. So I think more mass is the greater inertia. So inertia is mass. And this is really getting to that Newton's first law. So now we can use the Newton laws of motion to do some calculations. And so if we have a force here, we know that F equals MA. So if we have a, uh, an, ex an acceleration and a mass, where this right here, these are going to be the units for our A. And the kilograms, that's going to be units for our mass. And kilograms times meters per second squared is going to give us that Newton. So now it's just taking the 5 times 2, right? We want that 5. We want to multiply it by that 2. And then you're just going to get your 10, 10 Newtons. So what is the mass of a sofa if we have this net force? So once again, we're going to use Newton's second law. We can just rearrange this. Sometimes I think uh, it's, um, yeah, I, I, well, I'll show this little tip. I don't, I, I, I'm going to regret this as soon as I do this. But if I have this F, M, and A, if I want to solve for the force, I take my finger and I cover it and I get mass times acceleration. If I want to cover, if I want to try to solve for the mass, I get my force divided by acceleration. Sometimes this little triangle really helps. So now I'm going to get my force, which is 80. And I'm going to divide my 80 by my acceleration, which is the 0 0.5. So 80 divided by 0 0.5 is just like taking 80 and multiplying it by 2. So here we're going to get this 160 kilograms. Lastly, as I'm coming down here to this number 10, we're going to determine the net force, the total force acting on these objects. So now we're going to get to the sum of the forces. So now we're going to sum the forces here. So if I take this object here for A, I could take 6 minus 2. 6 minus 2 is four. I'm taking a positive six and I'm adding in a negative two. I'm saying that because going this way, I'm calling positive. Going this way, I'm calling negative. So some of the forces then for object B, I'm going to get five plus three. Five plus three. Five going in the positive direction, three going in the positive direction. I'm going to get to eight and the units for this are all newtons so now object a has four newtons object a has four newtons and object b has eight newtons so now i see my selection is going to be this letter d so as we continue looking there's more stuff we can go through uh i'm not gonna go into all of these right here because some of this stuff, I want you to be able to do the calculations. I want you to do the calculations to get to this. And I'm also putting up the, the answer sheet for this. So you'll be able to see the answers. Uh, I just want you to work through it yourself first. 
And now uh, if we have a student pushing on a pillow as hard as he can, uh, get into the 50 Newtons on the pillow, this is where we're gonna have to use that Newton's third. Um, which way do you push on the ground when you wanna run forward? All right, so once again, this is where I'm, I'm trying to think about Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, now, as I come down here to a truck going on a freeway, we have this. Here, I want you to use Newton's second. Which factors affect the force of gravity uh, between uh, two objects? So this, now, now I want us to be talking about gravity. So we have gravity. And sometimes it helps if I just say this, I don't like doing this, but gravity in circles, because really when we're talking about gravity, we're gonna be um, getting back to this circular motion. So in this gravity, we know this equation here, this force due to gravity is that capital G, M1, M2 on R squared. And that's because when we're dealing with an M1, let's say this was the earth. I like putting the earth as the, as the center. And uh, if we have the moon going around the earth, I'm not saying I'm dealing with a geocentric universe. I'm dealing with a, the moon. And now I'm gonna have this be mass two. This is mass number one. Well. The radius R R is going to be uh, as we look throughout this orbit, and this force of gravity has to do with this mass and this mass. Where if we see that mass is um, uh, directly dependent. And the distance here is in inversely squared dependence. And so we're gonna to come to this and I wanna uh, reevaluate this again, but we're also gonna have for the circles that this centripetal force, remember this is that fictitious force, that mv squared over r. I'm even gonna put fake because I'm gonna come back to this and I'm gonna to try to holler at you guys about this one here tomorrow. Uh, when we're coming at this fake and fictitious force. But as we're dealing with these fake forces, uh, centripetal forces, uh, when I mean fake, I mean it's really this force due to gravity that was making this go in this circle, not an mv squared over r. Is gravity making it go in a circle, but it had this behavior that we were able to quantify. But we're going to see that the force is always towards the center. That's why it's called centripetal. So the force is towards the center. And if the force is towards the center, then we know the acceleration is also towards the center. The force is towards the center and this acceleration is towards the center. The velocity, was perpendicular to the force. Perpendicular to force. So that velocity is perpendicular to the force, this V, this V. All right, so uh, I will be posting up the answers to this. Um, but right now I want you guys to keep working through trying your best, trying to work on this equation sheet and trying to make some stuff come together. Oh, someone typed in a question. I don't understand anything. That's not a question. All right. Uh, so.